Goran, congratulations on this beautiful film. It's, I found it profoundly moving and needed a hug afterwards. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we're aiming for. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, James. I was kind of broken, uh, but also healed. <laughs> great. Like, I think those are the exact words I would have used in the pitch. <laughs> if well, I had a pitch. Yeah. And I actually, I, I came out to my mum at the end of 1999, pretty much exactly the time, the time that the first part of it is set. Um, mm. And I have lived in Melbourne for a little while as well. So as well as it, I did have a few sort of um, extra personal uh, connections. Mm to it so. no, that's amazing i love it like i just spoke to someone whose birthday is the same as the main character is so oh, okay. <laughs> i'm loving all these connections that are kind of, <laughs> yeah. all planned when you wrote it of course yeah so yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. it's strategic <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so t take me back to the, the writing process what kind of initially uh inspired you and how autobiographical um uh the, the, the screenplay is it's more emotionally autobiographical, not literally. You know, the events didn't happen to me. Um, I'm not a dancer. I don't I don't dance. I mean, I generally try not to dance at all. When I do, it's under pressure and very badly. Um, <laughs> so, you know, uh, there's a lot of differences between me and uh, I've never been to Argentina. <laughs> uh, I didn't I didn't want it to be um, my me or my own life. I tried to avoid as much as I'm a narcissist in real life, I try not to impose that on innocent viewers and you know, in cinemas. <laughs> um, no, but where it came from is I was reading a short story um, late at night once that um, it was about something else, but like at one point a high school boy goes to his first ever party um and I you know I got to a particular point in the paragraph he steps into the party and then I could not finish the paragraph because suddenly all these memories started flooding back at me for my own uh, well the one time I went to a party in high school it was literally one time um uh, and it wasn't so much the events or what happened it was a very nondescript party for the most part but um just the mindset of who I was as a 16 17 year old kid um and I just had like such a vivid memory of this time I never really think back on. Even when I was living it, I wasn't thinking about who I was. I was much more interested in the rest of the world that I felt was like <laughs> kept away from me. Um, and yeah, as those feelings and mindsets started flooding back and sort of in the context of who I became later and then yet again later on, um, I just uh, thought I'd love to kind of capture these feelings um and suddenly i was thinking of it you know the image was two guys in a car talking um because as a teenager in australia you spend a lot of time being driven around this is the only way to get anywhere and you can't have a license till you're 18. um and you know it flooded out like just a lot of the dialogue came to me that one night i just ran out of bed like and sort of started typing frantically to just keep up with the lines of dialogue as they were coming at me um and yeah i mean actually a week later the script was finished which, which you know is insane but normally i don't really write that fast um even though i am a fast writer that was like a record for me but i think um i wanted to tap into this very raw feeling and then i think if you you either produce it quickly so it becomes this so it keeps the rawness and cohesion or i'm not sure you deliver you know be finished in the right way so yeah yeah and I, I love that that car journey and um the, the, it's very delicate in the way you capture um coals um you know through the pov shots just looking at things like adam's uh hand on his uh his leg and uh all these things that he's taking in and um i wonder if we could just talk a little bit about this sort of what's going on between them because the attraction there is sort of much more than just like oh you know a, a physical thing isn't it because mm. and I think that's very true it got me thinking about kind of uh, gay um, relationships or attraction particularly when I, when I was younger when I was kind of Cole's age in that th there's just so much more to it because you know the older man is perhaps a version of uh, who the younger one can be he's more liberated mm. as a gay man and the younger one he probably um, Adam probably recognizes something of himself and anyway you, 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 you yeah. I'll let you talk because <laughs> I could talk about no, it no, I mean this is <laughs> like I, I live to hear these things and I really get frustrated with interviews where I'm just like no tell me things because I'm much more interested in you I promise <laughs> uh, but no you're totally like uh, um, on the on the money with that because I, I was really interested in that sense of also 
because you know the writing was coming out of this feeling of like who i am now um and um i'm much more like like i was very fascinated with like this feeling of not really knowing your sexuality while it's really living inside you and shaping you um and then uh, if you when you see someone like that just recognizing that and watching them and i think inevitably it brings up feelings of like i remember being that kid you know um and you know i mean i was very different from cole he's kind of um he's closer to who i was at 14 at 17 i was already like militantly out and it was you know i was a very different kid <laughs> but um 14 year old me was very similar to him and um i think you know I, I never actually met another queer person until later um but i i think i it, i would have been i was just curious how it would have uh happened if like uh not even in a romantic sense but just like me being exposed to a gay person at a time when i thought you know gays only happen on television that wouldn't happen in you know suburban melbourne um just how you would respond before you even know yourself suddenly you're confronted by this and you know I can imagine like being unconsciously attracted, not even realizing you're attracted to someone and it kind of building and building and suddenly it's like if, if they tell you uh, they're gay, like it's like the rug is pulled from under you. Um, and um, and similarly on the flip side, in terms of being the older person, and, you know, he's not much older, he's like five years older, uh, but a lot happens in those five years. And I think, um, I think recognizing that, part of you especially in a time and place where there's no one else really like you so I I think uh I've spoken about the, how I think there's a special kind of loneliness if you're like a gay kid anywhere even to this day and age but before technology where you could kind of conceive of other people like you existing outside of television like in the suburbs of you know I was the only even when I came out which was 2003 in my final year like I was the only gay uh openly queer kid um, and I came out partly so that someone would at least secretly tell me uh, that they're also gay and not not even looking for romance, just like totally there's someone I can talk to about things, you know. Um, but I, I think like there, you kind of recognize that lonely, you don't have to speak about it. I actually would feel uncomfortable speaking about it directly to someone like that, especially when they're experiencing it and they're young and naive. But um, I think I was really fascinated by that feeling. So. Um, I, you know, to me, I watched the film from both of their perspectives, and it's a very different experience in, in either direction. Yeah. And your lead um, actors bring so much to it, too. Um, tell mm. me a little bit about casting them and, yeah, what, what they did bring to it, whether it, um, you know, altered or ch changed in any way what you'd originally kind of uh, written in your, your screenplay. Mm. Yeah, yeah um, I'm rarely looking for... Um, actress to do exactly what's written I usually um and I don't think it ever works uh you kind of imagine someone ab abstract and then that person doesn't really exist in real life and I'm much more interested in finding someone like in the case of for example Elias Anton who I cast as Cole um he looked and sounded not, like nothing like what was written on the page um and initially when I first thought his tape it was the first like audition and it was late in the process it was the first audition tape that got me like who is this kid because like it was more just like the his eyes felt like they, they carried a life in them you know and he was so willing to be open emotionally and like without even thinking about it just vulnerability is his natural state even as a person like you know but also as a performer which is really rare um and i was like okay well he can't play the main role because he looks like you know uh he, he has too many muscles was one of the main problems frankly <laughs> i was like i wrote a skinny kid <laughs> um and then I was like okay but look at the story and imagine it with this set of eyes and this voice and this face going through this journey and how, what, what adjustments do you have to make um and it, it was a little bit different but I was more interested in it I, I kind of no longer cared about the one I wrote you know the version I wrote I was like no no this is the one that like you know like you feel the pressure in your chest it's like this is you know this is what I want to kind of capture and preserve and document um so I was like okay he's definitely playing it and it kind of solved a lot of problems as well because originally we thought it would be impossible to find someone who could play birth, uh, birth ages so we were looking for actors to try and match at birth ages and it was just you know trying to find someone like Australia is not a very I mean it's a very multicultural place but the Australian arts are very much a rich white kid uh type of thing 
Um, so it's really hard to find actors in general who are of any minority, frankly, uh, much less than to try and match them across ages. Um, so yeah, it was like in meeting him and going, hang on a second, he could possibly play the other one as well. Uh, that's psychologically a much tougher thing to take on. And, um, you know, I, I think both me and him were like, well, let's hope it works out because there's just no other option. Um, and then watching him kind of evolve and grow and suddenly he's playing someone who's five years older than him and doing it so convincingly, it was just like, you know, I, I have a very parental relationship to all three other key, key actors. So I'm just like, oh my boy's growing up, you know, it struck my eyes, it was deeply moving. And then on the other hand, with um, Tom Green for Adam, um, I tracked down, just in my research of actors in Australia, I tracked down some clips of uh, a performance he gave in a film called Down River a few years before this. And like some, like even the not so showy ones, just ordinary things, you know, steps off a bike, walks into a cafe. There was firstly the financial magnetism, like a movie star vibe, but also very natural, naturalistic, and just the sense of like, you know, I, I, he, he wasn't putting on a selfie face, trying to kind of present something. It, it was just like, it felt like I'm watching a person thinking and feeling things and planning things. And it was just like quite a rare quality. I think anywhere, but again, especially in Australian film and TV, like it's very presentational acting normally. Um, and I just quickly and frantically emailed my casting agent going, can we get like, can we send the script to this, this kid? Don't just send the scenes, send the full screenplay, send everything I've got, you know? Um, and she was like, oh, his audition tape came in like an hour ago, like coincidentally. And it was the first one I watched. And in this case, it was uncanny how much, I mean, I don't, I didn't really picture Adam very vividly. To me, it was just like a uh, set of eyes in an abstract personality, like nothing else. But like what he was doing with his eyes, what they were doing to the, even just like the person who was reading opposite him uh, was uncanny. Like, you know, he didn't even need direction. And um, I, that, that was actually the weirdest experience where I was like, this is exactly who I wrote, you know? Um, and then he was on set in encouraging them to improvise and kind of like not really speak or do the scenes as they're, um, until they're feeling, you know, the particular feeling, like the camera would be running and then it wasn't like, we have to shoot action right now. It's just like, we're all ready, we're rolling, you just live in the moment and then see what comes to you. Um, so in that improvisation, and improvisation isn't always verbal, sometimes it's just glances and moments of connection. Um, they built on what was there, and I think a lot of their own actual personality comes through, which was, you know, what I really wanted, you know, in meeting them, there's an essence to them that you can't really write in advance, you discover this human being, um, and uh, Patty Hook, who plays Ebony, like, there's a lot of dialogue that feels like it's really well written, but she literally just improvises it out of thin air, <laughs> um, it's her first ever movie, <laughs> or role on screen, and it's just uncanny, because she's playing someone 180 degree you know, removed from her actual personality. Um, and the fact that they could all kind of, all three of them could um, work at both ages. And it felt like, you know, it was you know, there was only like three days between shooting those scenes and they just transformed internally so much, you know. And we only had three days to give them, give the boys to grow some facial hair while we shot like cutaways of boxes and roads. Um, and, you know, I was just hoping and praying it could work out because there was no one, like, it didn't have a backup. There was no actors who I felt, like, I met some interesting actors, but they weren't the right fit. Like, there was no one else who could take over the role if this wasn't working out. Um, so I think I just really lucked out in the end, like, quite significantly. No, nope, that's incredible. I really uh, thought there must have been about six months in between. <laughs> no, three days. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, three days in a weekend, so five. Well, Goran, thanks so much. Um, delight to chat to you about this. I could uh, talk to you for about it for hours, so perhaps we'll get a chance at another point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll some more questions. <laughs> well, I've got another movie coming out later this year, so let's continue the conversation. Okay. <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks, James. <laughs>